Greetings, everyone. This is Rock and Roll Spot coming at you with the Wicked Comic Book Roundup. And yes, we are a little late this week. As I stated earlier, I, I don't think I mentioned it last week, but this week's roundup is uh, slightly delayed because, uh, well, money is a thing that's necessary for buying new comics. And, well, I had to wait till yesterday to get thought I got paid to do so. Anyway, let's get started. Kicking things off with this week's X Men books as well as this week's Avengers related title. So the first book we've got is X Corp number five. Where we left off, um, <clears throat> a team of mercenaries led by, or hired by, by uh, the former CEO of Nobilis Pharmaceuticals, had invaded the X Corp headquarters, and there was an explosion, which seemed to be directed, seemed to take out Madrox Prime. Uh, the mercenaries had, were uh, taken down, but were had been stopped by the Madrox dupes. But turns out they've got uh, basically pill they have uh, capsules that contain means of enhancing them. And well, yeah. So elsewhere, with Madrox dead, the Fenris twins go up and go after the up until recently fighting. Uh, Angel and Monet, who let their uh, their darker sides out and go out to try and keep Fenris uh, separated from one another as their pick hours work based off of uh, physical contact. It doesn't always work. Elsewhere, Sarah St. John is attempting to hack and get what information she can, but uh, Trinary has managed to stop her and, well, Turns out we got a little more information on the uh, enhancements that the uh, Mercs were given. Increases strength and durability, but decreases critical thinking. Turns out the Thunderous Twins are going after the uh, Ionospheric br uh, Bandwidth. Oh, what is it? Ionospheric bandwidth generator, which is what uh, Fenris is going after. But the fight between the two of them continues. Uh, and more and more, the uh, Fenris twins are being are pretty much just being, uh, you know, given grief by Archangel and, uh, and M. Um, one fun point to make is that uh, Andreas is carrying, a, is carrying a sword, which, I mean, yes, okay, he, you know, he's the son of Baron of Baron von Strucker, so it makes sense he would, you know, that, it does, it's not exactly far-fetched that he would have some training in uh, use of various melee weapons, but there's also the fact that he was, he was for a period, swordsman of the Thunderbolts. But, uh, J.P. Cole, the, uh, the former CEO of Nobles, ex corps main uh, competitor, is confronted by one of the board members. Celine Gallo. Turns out, though, he's... Uh, she tries to, uh... drain his life force. Well, he can't, really, because there's some anomalies which pass on to her. But, uh... Turns out that what Fenders... So Fenders, I, I know, Fenders is trying to copy and seal the, uh, the bandwidth generator. So, the, uh... The dupes go into bait and sag themselves about around in uh, what's referred to as the buckyball protocol. But the basic idea is that they can absorb, they can sacrifice themselves to absorb as much energy from, from it as possible, so that if, it, if something happens, damage is mitigated. Um, later. Uh, 
Madras Prime is resurrected on Krakoa, and he also takes some time off with his uh, wife Layla Miller and their, and their kid. Sarah St. John escaped, as did uh, Fenris. Um, Triary is given Madrox's board seat because Madrox really doesn't care about the, having a board seat. Sarah St. John, it sure, turns out, however, has made, managed to get into a hospital and is recruited by none other than Orcus. And that is where the issue and the series ends. Um, I guess overall was it was a ter it wasn't terrible it wasn't great. I don't want to say it's one of the low points from the this period of X Men of X Men books, but at the same time, I don't know. It, yeah, whatever. It was it was okay. Uh, I I, I kind of I enjoyed the fact that while. Madrox has offered a place of importance within the company. He's kind of like, yeah, no, I'm, I'm good with, you know, just running the lab. Just, just let me do my lab stuff, okay? Um, still not too fond of the fact that they kind of just said, yeah, he no longer absorbs memories of a killed dupe. So he can only get memories back from dupes if he absorbs them. If he purposely absorbs them. So, yeah. But, oh, well. I'm sure another writer will decide, nah, he can do that act. He, he gets them when he, when you kill him, too. That's kind of the nature of things, sadly. And we're moving on to our next book. We've got X-Men, number three. Where we had left off, um, well, the X-Men had uh, dealt with two major threats from an unknown quadrant of space, game world to be exact. Uh, we open with a quote from Mr. Sinister. The only surprise is that Herbert hasn't turned up before now. I will pay him one compliment. He has good taste. That's it. Anything remotely inter interesting about him comes from me. From my work. If I decided to waste my, ta my talents and craft, craft a parasitic cockatiel, it would resemble the so-called high evolutionary. Clearly, Sinister does not think well of his uh, contemporary. And to be fair, I do recall there being a, a, an X-Men storyline in the late 90s, I believe, where the High Evolutionary turned off uh, the, the X-Gene worldwide. And um, Sinister had unwittingly helped him do this, and so, yeah, kind of was like, no, I'm, I need to study, you can't, so yeah. Anyway, so, the ship arrives from space and the X-Men meet it. Turns out it's the High Evolutionary. Along with some of his animen, or whatever, human-animal hybrids, and his daughter, Luminous. Rogue, oh, Rogue is ready to throw hands. She, she, Rogue does not have the best history with the High Evolutionary. But... High Evolutionary is like, hey, look, you know, you guys had some great stuff. So, um, tell you what, this will sterilize the human population. That way they can die off quickly and painlessly and, you know, as, and, you know, then you can move to Mars and Earth can die, can die out and, you know, you can kind of save. But, uh, yeah, so, but yeah, Rogue ain't having it. And Polaris' opinion is pretty much uh, when when Rogue says not to hold back, the X Men throw hands. But uh, the Evolutionary Guard comes out, which is basically, and they take on the X Men. Um, Luminous has the powers of Quicksilver and Scarlet, which combined. Uh, but yeah, over the course of the fight, um, Sunfire is injured, and uh, Luminous proves to be quite the threat until Sink sinks himself to her powers, and so the High Evolutionary decides, well. You can do that. 
I just turned them as powers off so you can't borrow them. But, uh, the Hellbusher makes, makes an offer. He'll withdraw the viral, the viral gift he has. He may will simply have to suffer and forgive the aggression visited upon his, uh, upon him during his visit in return for some of six blood. Sink decides that, okay, fine, that'll end this. Sink gets a drop. As they're leaving, uh, Luminous is informed that uh, the High Evolutionary does have a kill switch for Luminous's powers. Um, and Jean Grey has a conversation about uh, with High Evolutionary before he leaves about the ruler of Game World. Cordyceps Jones, a lower form of fungal life that uh, if more for the fact that he amuses High Evolutionary, the High Evolutionary would eradicate it. Or would eradicate him. Gina, the Evolutionary, later have a chat about Game World and, and Jones' various uh, games being run. And it's decided that uh, they're going to have to split the team. And they're, they're, how they decide who's who's going into space? Well, psychic paper, rock, scissors, and Cyclops uh, says it does ask if Jean's peeking when she does when they do this. And well, how dare he ask such a question? Then we learn that. Uh, we got Guy Rick meeting with uh, Fei Long. Basically, you know, he's going to go to Mars and either earn himself a place on the Araka for Araka, or he'll be Arcus's martyr in New York. Uh, da, 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 da. Dr. Stasis meets with uh, Ben Yurick and hands him a file. The Autopsies from Soul's Forge. And basically, and he tells Yurick that he looks forward to reading about Re Resurrection in the Daily Bugle. And that is where the issue ends. I'm, I'm digging the new X-Men book. I think it's, it's a good balance, I would say, of uh, kind of more classic superhero type stuff with, but while also keeping in mind the current status, X-Men status quo. Which, and so far all three issues have been, you know, have been good issues. All around. So yeah, moving on to our next book, though, we've got X-Men and the Onslaught Revelations. So in Way of X, um, Nightcrawler had discovered that uh, Onslaught was secretly running around and uh, psychically manipulating. Or well, Onslaught was still was still around psychically and was causing some troubles on Krakoa. Um, But yeah, so Onslaught has Onslaught has returned, um, and in, while possessing, while in control of Xavier, Onslaught begins wiping the backups on in Cerebro. But they have a uh, <clears throat> but in a thing called Crucible. The basic idea being that, uh, well. It's going to be a party, and while there, the X-Men are just going, the various means the present are just going to murder each other for the grand climax of the, of the whole event. But Pixie is snagged by Nightcrawler. The little bit of uh, Onslaught is excised from her. Uh, 
and uh, found that Orcus managed to find a had managed to find a uh, a sliver of onslaught, so to speak, and they hid it and waited. That, you know, they kind of a you know, it would make its way to Krakow eventually. But uh, Pixie's whole thing is she has to go around with basically stabbing people with her with her uh, soul dagger. Um, inside uh, Legion's mind. Nightcrawler, Cortez, and Lost discuss what, what all is going on. And Cortez faces some hard truths while Pixie's out in the real world saving people from the Sammy with her soul dagger to basically make sure that things do not go do not go the way Onslaught wants. But um, we all, we learn a little bit more about uh, Cortez and Loss history together, and. Uh, Like we, learn, we we get more about Fabian's past. Like, you know, mo most when the action kicks in, most kids are terrified. Him, you're like, oh, I have something to fight for now. And he, he even say, you know, maybe it makes me a persecution terrorist. Poor little rich kid, thirsty for for the struggle. Yeah, maybe. But he spent five minutes testing his powers and realized that the joke was on him. He can't do anything that make other mutants better. He's support staff. He's not the. He's not gonna, you know, no, 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 I suppose, no, no heart stirring arcs. Spoiled brat answers the call to revolution, learns humility and heroism. And he says, he, you know, he he brings up the fact that people ask why he stick, why he has never given himself a code, a mutant name, so to speak. Is because no one wants to throw a parade for Captain McGuffin. And if he's got to be the bridesmaid, if he's got to always be in someone else's shadow, then it, he better pick the biggest damn shadow he could find. So, Magneto. Which is who Pixie has gotten to, and thankfully his powers have uh, no effect on a psychic dagger. But, uh... Nemesis plays his part in basically changing up the, uh, the, fun the fungus he's growing. Um, DJ and Dazzler work together to basically redo the set, the set list. So it's actually a party that happens, not a massacre. Onslaught is defeated, but yeah, Onslaught is defeated even after kind of taking on, just fully taking control of Xavier, trying to just say, okay, screw it. I'm not going to have you, uh, I can't get everyone to kill each other? Fine, I'll just kill them myself. But, Nightcrawler and his allies are able to uh, stop on Onslaught and pull him from the, uh, from Xavier. We also learned the, the book of the, uh, the, name, the title of the book that uh, we gave me excerpts of, of throughout Way of X. The Book of the Spark. But Onslaught is done away with, and uh, it's decided that. Uh, as Legion has organized his mind into something of a uh, non-Euclidean plane, it's going to end up being a uh, a precinct for, as Nightcrawler describes them, Legionnaires. 
Defending what unites defending what unites the people of Krakoa, not punishing the growing pains. And that is where the issue ends. We do get a uh, look at some of the potential members of the, the Legionnaires that appear to consist of Dr. Nemesis, um, Pixie, Nightcrawler, and Juggernaut. And I'm not sh there are a couple others I'm not entirely sure of. I'm sure if the picture was in, you know, more than just two was more than just two color picture, I'd probably be able to tell. But yeah, kind of a a a mission statement. We keep the peace. We keep the law. We keep the spark. And that is where the issue ends. It, basically, you know, good wrap up to uh, Way of X. I'm looking. I, I think I'm probably more looking forward to Legionnaires. But uh, yeah. That should be, that honestly should be a fun read. And I like that they're going to be bringing Juggernaut in. And somehow coming up with a, with a way to get him to operate on Krakoa. Anyway, moving on to our next book. We, we go into the X-Men's past with X-Men Legends number 7. Now, as with every, as every issue, or every two issues of X-Men Legends as, a, a new, as an arc, is one whole arc. This is the beginning of a new arc. Wolverine and Jubilee in in Osaka. Starts off with Wolverine pretending to try to traffic uh, Jubilee to some uh, Yakuza. But he's trying to figure out which the Yakuza who have been uh, doing just who have been trafficking in mutant children. But yeah. So They, uh, but yeah, they deal with the Yakuza, and, uh, Yukio shows up. Logan learns more about, uh, this, she's also tracking down two specific orphans who've been kidnapped, both mutants. One can, uh, melt steel, the other is a, uh, seems to be something of a teleporter. Teleportation, phasing, a little of both. But, uh, Logan and Yukio basically, you know, shake the trees, see what, fa see what falls out, end up in an aquarium where uh, one of the two uh, twins, or children, is about to be sent off because no one would, would suspect that, uh, No, no one would think to, you know, question a shipment between two world-renowned aquariums, especially of, you know, goblin sharks. But it turns out that involved in the trafficking is none other than Lady Deathstrike. But, uh... And, of course, the hand. What's, what's a Wolverine story set in Japan without the hand, Right? I mean, I, I'm pretty sure that's, like, one of the rules Marvel writers are given. It's like, if you're doing a Wolverine story in Japan, you must include the hand. But, uh, Jubilee gets kidnapped by uh, Lady Deathstrike, who tends to sell her. But, uh, the teleporter, the teleporting orphan shows up and teleports Logan. However, you can... Yukio attempts to follow and is sadly stabbed by uh, Lady Deathstrike's employer before she heads to Shanghai. And that is where the issue ends. I, as I said, I, I really do kind of love it. And this this was so much so full of so much nostalgia. It was, it was like reading an old X Men or an old Wolverine book from the nineties. In part, I would say because writer Larry Hama who wrote a lot of Wolverine issues in the 90s. Moving on to our last book for the video, we've got United States of Captain America number four. So, Sam and Captain, Captain America, uh, Steve Rogers and Sam, and Sam Wilson are uh, on the trail of Cynthia, Cynthia Schmidt, a.k.a. Sin, a.k.a. at this point, Sister Superior, and uh, Speed Demon, 
who is disguised as Captain America, as the two have stolen Cap's shield. And appear to be going after members of a group called the Captain's Network. Basically, a, a loose-knit group of uh, Captain Americas in various various uh, locales. You know, these, these are the get. These are the guys, these are the Captain America. This is the these are the people that you know handle you know bulls. They're going to fight, say, Nuke and Bullseye in Times Square. No, these are the guys that are going to you know be uh, go after a uh, corrupt real estate developer in a, rur in a rural midwestern town or some such. So the issue begins. Um, after uh, Sam, Steve, and, and Bucky go to the annual Kickapoo powwow, they were just in Kickapoo country. Three days later, in Colorado, um, at a small cabin, when uh, Aaron, the Cat American Railways, shows up alongside. Um, okay, because they introduced her at the end, not in the beginning. Ariel Agaba Agaban Agabayani, uh, the, cap the campus Captain America. We'll get to her origin after the primary story. So yeah, um, but it turns out there's alarm growth has gone off, and uh, there are certain military projects to be accessed just by having Cap's shield, including one at NORAD. But they are probably going to need. There's someone else they they're going to have to get. U.S. agent, who is one step from passed out drunk at a bar. And so, the Caps, the various Captain Americas, head off towards uh, NORAD. Turns out that the project is keeping uh, the hate monger in, locked away. But, uh... Sister Superior has uh, freed Warrior Woman, or aka Commander Krieger, who intends to free help or hate longer. But before doing so, Cap and his allies show up. Um, they're trying. They, they they try to prevent. Uh, they you know. Get into a fight. They try to prevent the hate monger from being freed, but Commander Krieger manages to do so. And uh, for it turns out that uh, actually, Speed Demon was not masquerading as Cap of his own volition. He did this. He did it as a uh, he was being mind controlled, which actually kind of kind of happened with that. Speed Team is not a favorite villain, or even a favorite member of the Thunderbolts, but I mostly, I tend to think of him as having been a member of the Thunderbolts, which meant that for a moment, he tried to be good, he tried to be a good guy, and, well, it's kind of hard to, for someone to say, yeah, I'm trying to be a good guy, and then, you know, work with the Red Skull's, act, the Red Skull's daughter, so, yeah, but, um, Krieger and Hatemonger escape, but uh, Captain's managed to take uh, Sister Superior prisoner. Speed Demon is not happy about it, what's happened, about having been, having been mind controlled. And, uh, well, of course, Superior is trying to, you know, basically explains that her father invented some of the most heinous or heinous torture techniques that exist, and she's mastered every one of them. There's nothing, and so she asked what the what the Cub Scouts think that they can do to make her talk, besides you know aside from asking politely, which is where U.S. agent comes in, basically saying that uh, introducing himself, saying he was expelled from the Cub Scouts. So that that's where the A story is. So, so we get uh, Ariel's origin, um, Hard Road University on Halloween night. Uh, her roommates are, are heading out to a, heading to a costume party. She, she's got to finish up a, a paper. Well, most of her roommates are. One of them is staying in, in, the, in the dorm room in bed. 
But uh, it turns out that the one staying in bed was assaulted by a by someone at the frat that the, the where the party are, the roommates are going to is is a you remember the frat that the holding the party that the roommates are going to. But she's dressed as Captain America in a quasi Captain America outfit, complete with a shield. So she busts in. The guy tries to chat her up, but uh, she manages to get away. Finds her, finds her roommate's phone, which was stolen by the uh, the shit stain, and takes the shit stain to too. They get into a bit of a fight. She manages to escape. As uh, dude comes out, he basically says, "You know, stop the girl. The one dressed as Captain America. Only there's." A bunch of girls dressed as Captain America present. So she gets back to her dorm room. You know, here's your phone back. And here's her. You know, basically the papers are going to get everything that uh, is on the phone. Turns out that uh, it was a coordinated plan among her, uh, the roommate, the rest of the roommates. And uh, the one that stayed behind wants her own outfit and shield for next time. Um. <laughs> <laughs> the notes from Steve and Sam uh, say that her uh, base of operations is in Boston. Um, goes that mainly goes after uh, fellow students, or mainly goes after people, protects her fellow students from people wh whose money and, and family connections usually shield them from consequences. So Sam kind of says, that, you know. Maybe we should keep mum about her involvement in things. Though Steve says, you know, that the school should be proud of her student, and you know, he'll even write the, write a letter if need be. And well, Sam adds that uh, can't write a permission slip for vigilante activity. And Steve responds with, "He can try." Which, to be fair, that is most Steve Rogers thing in the world to do was, you know, write a permission slip for someone's thing. Like, you know, dear dear dean, dear dean, whoever, please allow so and so to be a to engage in vigilante activities. Signed, Captain America. Anyway, yeah, that's where the issue. Uh, as as you know, it's 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 all, it's all right. You know, it's nothing spectacular. Not, you know, I get some filler before I guess we get a, another cap ongoing. But you no, know, like I said, it's it's fine. Anyway. That's it for now. As always, feel free to like, share, and subscribe. Links to my Facebook, Twitter, Patreon, and PayPal can be found in the description box down below. This is Rock and Roll Spock signing off saying, live long and rock hard.